All right, let's carry on with our Brogue tutorial. Um, right now we're just exploring depth one still. Right. Okay, looks like we've got a rat over there. Uh, the weakest enemy in the entire game, actually. Rats are nothing. They're so easy to beat. Uh, let's check what's over here. Oh, a kobold. Let's hit him while he's asleep. One hit. Oh, another one. <laughs> Having a sleepover over there. Another scroll. And here's a big old chasm. Talked about that in the last episode. Uh, yeah, so yeah, if you're next to a chasm actually and you try to jump in it won't let you if you like accidentally do it You have to confirm it. So yeah, we're not gonna jump down there But if we wanted to we could and sometimes that's actually a good option for escaping enemies. You'll take damage You'll take like fall damage But a lot of the times If you have a really strong enemy and that's the only way to get out it's better to take some fall damage than to die so uh, This early on that's not a problem though There's the rat, and let's just wait for it. Oh, and it's hunting. Right, there we go. Okay. Oh, jackals. All right, so I'm gonna do something that I usually do when I play. I usually turn on my stealth range when I play. And the way you do that is you hit the, I believe it's the right bracket button. Yeah. And so now this, uh, border right here is what my stealth range is. So now I can see whether or not enemies can have the possibility of seeing me. So I'm not going to be waking up those guys, but this guy, uh, this jackal right here, is probably going to wake up since it's in my stealth range. So look, I'll take a step back. And, oh, he's, yeah, he's hunting. So, and if you notice, like, if I take one step back, he will move two spaces because he's twice as fast as me. See? And now I can go ahead and just attack it. Uh, another thing to notice is when you stand still, you can stand still by hitting Z. Uh, your stealth range actually decreases when you just stand still. So if you don't want to be noticed by something, you can just kind of stand still and hope that it'll walk past you because it'll just decrease your stealth range. But we're just going to... I guess we don't have to fight these guys, but uh, I'm already over here doing it, so. All right. Typically, like, if you can avoid fighting stuff, you probably should. Uh, just because there's no, like I said earlier, there's no experience points or anything like that, so there's not really a point in fighting something if you can just avoid it altogether, because you literally don't gain anything by fighting uh, enemies. They're basically just obstacles. Alright, and it looks like that is the entire first floor. Uh, here's the downward staircase. We walked past it. Um, the upward staircase on a floor uh, looks like the same thing, but it's an arrow pointing in the left direction. I, I guess we'll see in a second. Right there, upward staircase. Uh, and yeah, now we're on depth two. So from the first floor, it looks like we got just a potion and three scrolls and some javelins. Uh, the javelins are a little bit too heavy for us to use right now, but uh, we'll still save them for later. All right, here's, oh, notice how my stealth range got a lot smaller when I was sitting in the dark. And if you hit Z and stand still in the dark, you're pretty invisible. Like something has to get really close to you to be able to notice you. Actually, let's go up this top door. Some foliage. And you can attack diagonally. Sometimes it's good to approach stuff diagonally because then it takes less spaces uh, to approach it, which means it takes less turns in your stealth range, so it's less likely to wake up. So we can easily sneak up on that guy. All right. I, I feel like there could be like a secret door here, so I'm going to search. Okay, just thought I'd check. Uh, 
and nothing up here. Okay. Oh, here it comes. Alright. Oh, I just saw a monkey. So, monkeys are pretty annoying because they take a couple hits to kill. And what they'll do is when they hit you, there's a chance that they'll steal one of your items, one of your non equipped items. Uh, and then they just run away. So, you have to chase after them. Or a lot of times, uh, you'll have to use your darts to hit them because they'll be. They're as fast as you, but they're really evasive. So I saw the monkey walking this direction. So what I'm going to do, here's a technique that you can use, is I'll stand behind this door. And if the monkey comes and opens this door, uh, the first turn that it goes through the door, it won't notice me. So I'll be able to get a guaranteed sneak attack on it if I just wait behind this door and he decides to go this way as opposed to this way. And so a lot of times that's a good technique to use is to hide behind doors when you know that there's a wandering enemy so you can hit it. So I'm just going to wait and see if the door opens. Oh, <sighs> a goblin. I accidentally uh, hit Z twice, so I didn't get my sneak attack. But, um, well, I guess we're just going to have to fight this guy then. Oh, the monkey left, actually. I don't think it noticed me. Uh, so goblins, they have, like, a spear so they can hit you from two spaces away. So, like, look, if I stand right here, he can still hit me. And that's the strongest thing that we've come across so far, so. Alright, let's kill this goblin. As you can see, I took kind of a lot of damage from it. And we didn't even get to kill the monkey. Oh, I didn't even notice there's some armor over here. Splint mail. Oh, a potion. Uh, we've got some water here. Some deep water and some shallow water. Oh, and something that I didn't mention last time is uh, your items that can float away in the water, any equipped items won't float away, so it's just like your regular inventory. Well, let's look around in this brush. Oh, there's the next staircase, but we're going to keep exploring because we want to find all the goodies. Huh, nothing. Okay. Oh, there's a rat. Okay, so another thing you can do when you notice an enemy that's wandering is if you can get the chance to hide behind like a corner, like this, and wait for it to come around the corner, it's kind of similar to waiting behind a door. So you can just kind of wait Oh, he must have turned around. I guess he was going the other direction. Oh! <sighs> okay, the monkey stole one of my scrolls. Kind of moved a little bit too quickly. Didn't see him opening the door. So, right now, it shows right here if an enemy is holding an item, what the item is, and also says in the description. So now I have to kill it in order to get it back. So I'll hit it. And now, I could try to chase it down, but... Uh, it'll be a lot easier if I just throw darts at it. So, throw a dart, throw another dart, and throw another dart. Oh, missed. Throw another dart. Okay, and let's kill this rat real quick. Oh, shoot. Okay, so here's an eel. Eels are extremely dangerous early on, especially. Um, they do a lot of damage, and with your starting uh, armor and weapon, you definitely can't kill them. Well, I mean, you can kill them, but you'll take a lot of damage, and it's a lot easier for them to kill you than for you to kill them. So I need to move out of that and hope that I can grab this. 
Okay, and so I'm going to stay out of this water uh, as best as I can. Because that is not something I want to mess with. And yeah, the eels kind of hide in the water, so you can't see them all the time unless you like enter the water and they come out and attack you. Scroll. But yeah, be really careful about bodies of water early on, because yeah, pretty much everyone that's ever played this has died like on depth two to an eel because they didn't realize that it could kill them. <laughs> And yeah, you'll start spawning on depth two. Okay, and right here, if you notice, there's a staff. So here are the different staffs. Uh, I'll, I'll just go grab it and we can talk about staffs. So I'm gonna go around the water and only go into one square of water so I have the least chance of accidentally hitting the eel. Okay, so a redwood staff. Uh, so the way staffs work is a staff will shoot like a bolt of magic out of it uh, when you ap apply it. Uh, this gnarled redwood staff is worn to the touch. Who knows what it'll do when it's used. So like the potions have different colors. The scrolls have a bunch of gibberish. All the staffs are made of wood. Uh, different types of wood. So there's like a redwood staff, a birch staff, all the different kinds of wood staffs. And it's the same kind of thing. Once you identify one of them, then the rest of the staffs will be identified that are made of that type of wood for the rest of the game. Uh, <clears throat> with the other different types of items, there's also wands that are made of different metals, and the rings, I believe, have different gems. Um, and it's the same kind of thing with identifying them. At first, you don't know what they are until you identify them. So, uh, let's find an enemy to test this staff out on so that we can identify it. Oh, I saw a rat. All right, so we're going to hit apply. And you, uh, with these numbers, by the way, they're like hotkeys. So I can either click on it or we're going to hit the letter M and it'll select it. And now I can try to zap the wand or the staff at the rat. All right, and it says it's a staff of obstruction. So a staff of obstruction, what that does is it uh, blasts this green crystal barrier that slowly uh, melts away over time. So you can use it to like block off corridors and things to prevent, protect yourself from strong enemies. Uh, it's mostly used to help you escape. But yeah, it's, it, it can be pretty good, depending on if you know how to use it right. And so, um, staffs, the way they work is they actually have a certain number of charges. So there can be like two to five charges on a staff. And when you first get a staff, if you pick it up in the middle of nowhere like this, you have no idea what they are. So I'm just going to zap my staff until it stops working, and then I'll know how many charges there are. So zap over there, and let's use it one more time. Three, okay, maybe there's four, that would be pretty cool. Alright, so three stat, three charges. And it'll say right here that you have question mark out of three charges. And then over time, the charges will refill. So right here it says every 333 turns approximately, then I'll regain a charge and I can use it again. Uh, the only problem is I don't know how many charges it has, so I have to kind of estimate. Um, the only way to get this number to be the actual number that it's supposed to be, like a 1, 2, or a 3, is by using a scroll of identify on it. So a lot of the times you'll want to save your identify scrolls for staffs because then you can use them and then for the rest of the game you'll know how many charges you are you have and you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to know kind of what your options are because there's nothing worse than like needing to use a staff and you have no idea if it'll actually work and then you zap it and then like it says up here it fizzles and then something kills you because your staff didn't work so yeah we'll just leave that rat there he'll eventually get out uh, as you can see like the crystals are dissolving already but yeah, we'll just leave him there. 
Uh, is there anything else I want to say about staffs? Um, okay, oh yeah, here you can see it's been identified, so uh, now all of the obstruction staffs that I come across for the whole game will be labeled as a staff of obstruction instead of a redwood staff or whatever it said before. Uh, as you can see, there's like three red uh, bad staffs. So one that heals enemies, or it heals whatever you use it on, one that makes them faster, and one that gives them like a protective shield. Um, you can use those actually, because there are situations where you can get an ally, like an allied monster that helps you fight. And in that situation, it might be good to have them, because then you can cast it on your ally. But typically, you're not going to want to use these, and you're going to want these instead. All right, it looks like this floor is completely explored, so let's take a step down, go down the stairs. <clears throat> All right, got a big old chasm. Let's look around some more. Oh, a rat. Let's sneak it. Sneak attack. Oh, all right, so we've got a toad. Uh, toads are kind of strong, like I can definitely kill it, but uh, the annoying thing is that when they hit you, there's a chance that it will make you hallucinate. So oh, let's go ahead and see, we'll let you see what that looks like. So I'll fight the toad. All right, so you hit the toad, the toad slams you, you begin to hallucinate. So yeah, if you get hit by a toad, suddenly everything goes all wonky. So like, I have no idea what these are anymore. Well, I mean, I do because I remember that's a toad, and that's, I, I think it was a kobold. That or it was a rat, I don't remember, actually. And even, like, these, they go all crazy. You have no idea what what's going on. So I have a hallucinating uh, status right here. And uh, it takes a certain amount of time for that to wear off. The more times I get hit by the toad, the longer it'll take to wear off. So for now, I'm just going to fight it because I know what it is. And there we go. I defeated it, took kind of a bit of health from it, but uh, we're okay. So now I'll, I'll keep walking around, but I've got to be kind of careful, because if I run into an enemy and I don't know what it is, I don't want to just go and fight it. All right, as you can see here, there's also uh, something. We don't know what it is. Uh, let's just go grab it. Once you grab it, it'll tell you what it is. Scroll. Okay, cool. Okay, it doesn't look like there's anything over there. Hallucination starting to fade off. Oh, I don't remember grabbing gold, but yeah, there's gold in this game. You can't actually buy anything with it, but it's basically just a way to keep track of like points so like you don't have to ever grab gold it just increases your score at the end of the game that's it literally it so if you're doing like a competition or something or you just want to get as much gold as you can you can but it doesn't do anything like uh to help you really all right hallucination fades um i'll point out one of the potions is a hallucination potion, and it's the most useless potion of all the potions. If you throw it at an enemy, it does nothing. It just splashes on the ground. Uh, so from here, if you ever discover a hallucination potion, you're basically just never going to pick up another hallucination potion for the rest of the game. And on top of that, when you drink a hallucination potion, the hallucination lasts a really long time, like way longer than with a toad hitting you. So it's pretty annoying to drink also. The only way to get rid of it is if you drink a life potion. So we're probably going to eventually find one, but hopefully we'll get a detect magic uh, potion before then so that we can just chuck it. Alright, there's a potion. How are we doing on inventory space? Eight more items. See, I'm going to wait till I fill up my inventory before I start drinking potions. All right, so I know it's going to be up here already, so I think I'm going to stop this episode here, and we'll pick up uh, talking about what this is going to be uh, during the next episode.